Assalamu alaikum everyone. I hope all of you are doing well. So in this video, I will be discussing about Homi K. Bhabha and his post-colonial theory. So let's start. Now who was Homi K. Bhabha? Homi K. Bhabha is one of the most important and crucial theorists while discussing post-colonialism. His ideas are important to understand in order to fully comprehend the movement of post-colonialism. Homi K. Bhabha was born in Mumbai, India in the year of 1949. He belongs to a Parsi family. He got his early education from India, then moved to United Kingdom for further studies and after that he moved to United States where he is a professor at Harvard University since 2001. Baba has developed some critical ideas such as hybridity, mimicry and ambivalence to explain how the colonized people reacted and repelled the colonizing factor. So the first idea of him is hybridity. In a more general sense, hybridity refers to something that is not in a pure state, but is actually an amalgamation of two or more than two phenomena. In literature and more specifically referring to post-colonialism, hybridity is a trait that is adopted by the colonized subject when they strike a balance between their and their colonizer's culture. To decrypt it, this idea, Bhabha refers back to the initial phases of colonization from the late 18th century to early 20th century which are marked by the events of colonization. Bhabha focuses on the aspect that the concept of colonialism is not specified to domination or forced oppression of the colonizers and subservience of the colonized but it was also the event where complex individuals belonging to established and varied cultures came into contact. The colonizers invade the space of colonized while bringing in the ideology that their ideas, life and culture has superiority over the colonized. The colonized, influenced by the power of colonizers, do undergo change and they may imitate some of the features of their colonizers so much that it becomes the part of their culture. However, this morphed culture is still dissatisfactory for the colonized as they try to resist and revert back to what they assume was the pure culture before they came into contact with the colonizers. Bhabha in opposed to this is of the view that culture purity is merely a myth. He is of the idea that culture is not a static entity that can be fixed to a part that can be fixed to a particular time and space. However, in his view, culture is entity that experiences constant flux, having regulation of something becoming more prominent at some point, another getting disintegrated. Bhabha states that culture is a matter of mixedness, that is hybridity. This may be due to the reason that there is so there is no cultural isolation because people can travel. There may there may be culturally unexplored space, but the minute they come into contact with the foreign foreigners, the purity in, is contaminated as the foreigner may have different language, different background as well. So for Bhabha, the concept of hybridity is not as simple as that there is a colonizer who by force has taken up the land of people and colonized them, inflicting the idea that they need a superior power or culture upon them. So this may result in the adaptation of some of the aspects of the colonizers by the colonized, but Bhabha's ideology may refer to the idea that the cultural hybridity develops in the state of disintegration. So as Bhabha's most ideology inculcate the idea of resistance by the colonized people, this adoption of superior norms result in the colonized people become equally superior as that of the colonizer. The idea of Bhabha may not be considered as an act of transgression against colonizer, but this does point out to colonizers that, that due to concept of hybridity, there is so much imposed purity and superiority can be mimicked by the colonized, which is which in turn can invoke the idea in colonized that they are pretty much superior and capable of managing their power themselves. The concept of hybridity talks about the idea how cultures get infused in each other. This so happens when one tries and imitate and do the same as the other is doing. This leads us to the next concept of bhaba, that is mimicry. Now what is mimicry? It can be defined as the way 
the colonized people try and imitate the people in power that is the colonizers it is often seen as a way or a kind of strategy adopted by the colonized people with the mindset that by imitating the people in power they too will be able to have power one day in order to imitate the colonizers the colonized people suppress their own originality and transform themselves into a kind of optical illusion but they are deprived of the same rights as that of colonizers the colonizers colonize the people by stating that they need someone who can educate them or make them more civilized so the concept of mimicry chimes in where colonized people colonized people would dress and act as those in power but bhabas sees mimicry as a subservient act because it does pose a threat to the colonizers because they wanted people who could potentially mimic their action but at the same time lacks critical thinking and approach so if a colonized man in the process of mimicry achieved those ideals of thought process he could step ahead the colonizers hence becoming subservient so mimicry in bhabha's opinion can both negative and positive impact as a negative would be that the person loses his or her own cultural identity but at the same time mimicry also exposes to the colonizers their strange ideas and man- manners mimicking or mimicking can also be subserve subservient or sub- subversive in a way that people who are imitating and have knowledge of the colonizers may hinder the colonizer to act differently towards their colonized subject an example can be dr amrita rao from a passage to india by e m froster is a good example of this as he is the lawyer who have knowledge and understanding of all british laws and their implementation so the british colonizers hesitate to do anything against law thinking that person is unfamiliar but in reality they had to act fairly by their laws to keep their image of being just intact now that dr amrita rao may have the image of mimic man as he mimics the language education and style of his colonizers but his actions are empowering against colonizers now the third concept is ambivalence ambivalence in post colonial term is the way that both the colonizers and colonized regard one another the colonizers may see their colonized subject as inferior but may also regard as exotic being in the same manner the colonized people may regard the colonizers as superior yet corrupt at the same time in bhabha's opinion the colonial relationship is based on ambivalence and due to the fact that the colonizers want their relationships to or the want their subjects to imitate them and not become replicas the ambivalence the ambivalence then comes into play with respect to hybridity where the colon, colonized subjects would take on the certain aspect of colonizers and then again revert back to their own cultural identity the desire of becoming like their colonizers lead them to adopt certain aspect of the colonizers tradition but at the same time the colonized might de- despise some of the traits and so unlike the colonizers due to that reason in one of the, his essays sign taken for wonders by bhabha explained this further by giving an example of the translation of bible which was used as a tool for colonization by christianizing people bible was translated into native language so that it was approachable and understood by wider audience but bhabha argues that once the bible was translated into native languages it lost its its authenticity as certain things were omitted and added to the original text so there is an ambivalence to it so in this video we discuss about homi ke bhaba and his most important three major point based on post colonialism that is hybridity mimicry and ambivalence so that's all from my side if you have any queries you can ask me in the comment section please like subscribe and share my channel Thank you for watching